you expect when you go for an interview or what kind of questions you should be asking if you want to hire a candidate in sheet metal industry. So if you're watching this video, hopefully you are already lined up for some interview in the sheet metal industry or the company that you want to apply for is looking for candidates in sheet metal background. Now, any interview that you go for sheet metal companies where they are genuinely hiring some people, all the questions are based on three things. One is general knowledge about sheet metal. See, so they want to know whoever they are hiring do they have real knowledge in sheet metal or they are just fooling around? Number two would be sheet metal design skills. Topic number three would be specific knowledge of the sheet metal softwares that you have been using in the past or you are expected to use in the company that you are going to uh, going for an interview for. So before we start in real life question and answer, let me break down all these three categories into more specific ways so you can understand every single topic of what is the intention of it and what kind of knowledge they would expect from you. So the topic number one, which I said is the general sheet metal knowledge. In this type of questions, they will normally try to ask you questions like, what is your knowledge in terms of sheet metal industry? For example, do you have the basic skills to identify stainless steel and mild steel? Do you have basic knowledge to find out the difference between mild steel EGZ, mild steel galvanizing? So these are very common questions. For example, how to identify galvanized steel or cold gel steel? How to identify stainless steel 316 versus stainless steel 304? So that would be one of the questions of how to identify the metal. Now, if you don't know how to identify the metal, make sure you check out my other videos on how to identify metal, which will give you some good knowledge on how to identify different kind of material and what are the uses of those applications. Once they know if that you are from sheet metal background and you have some knowledge in the sheet metal industry. So let's come to the next topic, which is sheet metal design category. So most likely people uh, who are hiring in CNC as a CNC programmer or sheet metal designer, which is mainly basic skills for, for starting out your career in sheet metal. So the question you will ask, you will get asked, quite often are uh, how do you increase the efficiency of sheet metal projects or how do you know that project is going to be strong enough to serve the purpose? How do you increase the effectiveness of the cost in sheet metal industry? What is your knowledge in terms of folding? Because most likely whoever does the CNC programming is likely to work on a CNC press break programming. Having a knowledge on both of these process would give you a good advantage in designing. Even though you are not actually designing, but having a knowledge of that field, for example, how you should design a part in a way that the part will not break during a press break folding. So in my experience, I have seen so many designers designing the parts without actually knowing what they are doing, without actually having the experience on the floor, which makes life very difficult for the people who are working in your workshop. How the actual bending or how the actual fabrication or how the actual sheet metal laser work is a huge advantage for you guys. Now, depending on the role, you may be asked about your experience of actually working as a designer or what is your background in sheet metal industry in terms of designing, how would you fix a problem? Because as a sheet metal engineer, you might have to deal with your own company's files or sometimes other customer, like the customer you are dealing with, give you the files, which is most likely to be wrong or which might need some modification to suit your machineries. So these are the skills where you require your CAD knowledge. For example, do you have experience in SOLIDWORKS? Do you have experience in sheet metal? Or do you have experience with draft site or solid edge? or what kind of software that you have worked in your past. So these are the most common categories that interviewers hunt for. Let me start with the actual question that you will be asked for. For example, what is the different type of the sheet metal that you have worked with in your life? Okay, so to answer this question, I would say, I have worked with uh, various sheet metal kind of, uh, various sheet metal industry. 
I have done sheet metal laser cutting. I have hands-on experience on sheet metal laser cutting. I have hands-on experience with press break folding. Just say it if you don't have if you don't have it, don't try to bullshit them. They will definitely know if you are not saying the right thing. Another question like what are the common sheet metal machines that you have operated in the past or what are the fabrication processes that you have used in past? Uh, they will ask you with an example of saying, hey, look at this table, take a photo of this table, tell me how would you make it in a sheet metal industry or what machines or what operations you would be using for making the table. This will answer the question of most common fabrication processes that are used in the industry. Now, what are the advantages and disadvantages of each fabrication processes? For example, we can make everything by welding, but do you think it is most economical for welding? No, right? Because if you don't weld it, you can most likely you can fold the parts and all you have to do is just weld the corners. This kind of knowledge that every interviewer is looking for. Another sheet metal interview question uh, which I normally ask is what are the sheet metal applications that you have seen in your real life? So if you are an engineer looking for a job opportunity in sheet metal industry, start looking around your house. You will find numerous applications that are involving sheet metal. The most common, and I have asked this question to quite a few people, is how K factor or how band allowance or band deduction affects the metal properties. Because in every single industry, K factor is so important that if you don't know how to find it or what are the effects on sheet metal, your designing would likely to be wrong because that is the most common miscalculated factor that every person in soft floor faces. Uh, so the question would be like, how do you calculate the band allowances for sheet metal part? So to answer this question, I would say, just get a 100 by 50 strip, uh, fold it in a normal sheet metal, uh, whatever thickness that you are using. For example, for two mil, use V12 or V16. So fold it with the regular forces and measure the outside to outside dimensions. And there are lots of um, online calculators that you guys can use to find out the K factor or band deduction and use that value, put it in a sheet metal, SolidWorks or SolidEdge or any 3D software that will calculate the flat line. So that would be the right answer and that is how I would expect an answer. One of the other questions that I would ask is what are the factors that may affect a designing in sheet metal? This is a very tricky question because most likely uh, the factors like corrupt file or not having enough dimensions on the drawing. Uh, so let's say you started working on one of the client's drawing and it is very critical that you have every single dimension because if you don't, parts in the sheet metal software would be unlocked. That means if you make any changes, the prediction of how the part will behave or hole or line will behave will be really not predictable. <laughs> that will cause a really expensive rework and waste a lot of time in sheet metal workshops. Another question is, how can you improve the strength of the sheet metal part? So another tricky question that I would ask is, how will you improve the strength of the part without actually increasing the thickness? To answer this question, you can, you can say, there are two ways to increase the strength of the material. Method number one would be add some folding into the material so it has some stiffness. Method two would be add some stiffness of the same material, of the same thickness to support the structure. Method number three would be decide what material you want to use. Let's say if you are going to use aluminium, can you use mild steel? Or if you're going for a look, can you use stainless steel to have the same thickness but stronger material and then fold it to get even more strength? If you are straight out of uni, it is really difficult for you to gain actual knowledge on sheet metal softwares. You may know how to extrude or how to make a part, but that doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean you are doing the right way of designing a sheet metal. You can design just like you are drawing, but there are lots of other calculations that go with the sheet metal design softwares, like what materials they are using, what K factors they are using, and how strong the material needs to be. The next question that you would be asked for, what are the features that you have find most used in sheet metal designing? Features like bend or adding a flange, 
uh, add holes, punch, extrude, extrude holes, or put a notch uh, in the assembly. Those are the features that you can use a lot in sheet metal industry. Okay, so I think this video is already really long, but this is the most commonly asked questions. And if you haven't, if you haven't got an answer in this video, make sure you check out my other videos because I am always making videos for those people who are starting out in the sheet metal industry. Thank you very much, you guys, for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. I will see you in my next video.